Hi, and let's get today's session started. Um, my name is Ari. I'm the EMEA Marketing Coordinator here at eFolder based in, yeah, very fall weather-like Berlin, Germany, um, and I'll be your host for today's session. So welcome to this eFolder Expert Series. If this is your first time joining for one of our webinars, um, our webinar series brings together you know, eFolder staff members and expert speakers from the field and our partner community um, for a deep dive discussion on issues that we feel are relevant for small businesses and managed service providers, like today, marketing new products and services, especially those that are still fairly new to your client base and um, might need a lot more education on your hand. So that's what we'll be talking about today. Um, before we go through the agenda, I would like to just cover a few housekeeping items. Um, today's session will be recorded. Um, so the recorded version of the webinar will be made available on eFolder's YouTube channel. So if you want to check us out there, you'll definitely find the webinar there. But we will also send copies of the slides as well as the um, recorded event via email to everyone who registered for the for the session. So watch out for those emails later this afternoon. You'll get access to all this content. Um, we have put everyone who attended today into listen-only mode, which means you can enjoy the audio portion of today's session either by streaming it on your computer or just by dialing in over the phone. And of course, questions are strongly encouraged. Don't hold back. Um, we have a special Q&A plan for the end of today's discussion. But if you have any questions coming up along the way, um, just use your Q&A log um, in the panel to your right. Submit your questions, and we'll try our best to address them on the fly. Um, all right, so as you can see, today's webinar follows a logical flow, really. We will first discuss a few marketing tactics that can really help you brand your company and your service offerings, and then systematically go over how to apply this to cloud-to-cloud -cloud backup specifically, and why um, adopting a cloud-to-cloud -cloud backup solution can be really important for your you know, margins, profit margins, but also for your clients' um, increased data security. Um, all right, so first off, I would like to introduce our expert speaker for today's session, Nina Holm. Um, Nina is working in marketing at Mainbrain, which is a Denmark-based MSP business, and they are partnering with us. Um, and she's been working with them for about a year and a half now. And during that time, of course, she's gained really valuable experience in all aspects of MSP marketing, really, which brings her here today. So hi, Nina, and thank you so much for joining us. Hi, uh, thank you for letting me join as an expert speaker. Um, yeah, shortly I can introduce myself. I'm a marketing assistant at Mainbrain, um, which is an IT company uh, based in Copenhagen, Denmark. Um, it was founded in 2000, so we're 16 years old. Um, and currently we are six employees, where two are partners, and we have two IT consultants, a bookkeeper and I. Um, as a marketing assistant, um, and we um, serve uh, various kinds of clients in all different industries. Um, however, it's mostly uh, small and medium businesses um, because they may, might not have the resources to have an internal IT department, so we function as their IT apart, uh, department. Um, but we also have clients who own uh, solely purchase one subscription product through us, like CloudFinder. Um, we mainly operate in the Greater Copenhagen area, but we are also present in the Sealand area. Um, and but, however, some of our our clients are internationally known and operate in international, and we are also able to serve them uh, through our remote services. Um, our client base is uh, entrepreneurs, architects, engineers, designers, restaurateurs, um, and currently we're focusing on expanding our customer base with more engineering and architect companies with our product portfolio, uh, which includes eFolders, CloudFinder. Um, yeah, that's All right. It? Yeah, perfect. Yeah, I think that gave the audience a really good overview. Thank you. Um, all right, so now that you guys got the overview of today's session and the agenda, um, I would like to just jump right in and talk about some of the partner challenges that you as a small business owner 
are probably facing, and you know, we're basing that off of what our partners are sharing with us um, on a daily basis. Um, so all, all of these challenges are usually related to how do I build my company? How do I grow my company? How do I market my services? Um, and you know, our goal as a vendor is always to arm our partners with canned marketing tools that can make marketing a lot easier for our partners. Um, of course, it never completely eliminates your contributions or the amount of energy that you or your team need to put in, but we do try and arm partners with a whole library of canned resources that we call playbooks. Um, so today we want to focus on talking about the playbook that we designed for Cloud to Cloud Backup and you know, inspire you for, um, you know, inspire you to try new marketing initiatives that can be very simple and very effective at the same time. Um, because the problem is a lot of solutions like BDR, business continuity, backup, or cloud-to-cloud -cloud backup and file sync, and all these fields, there is usually a ton of education that you have to do with your clients, right? So even if you're taking the approach of bundling in a certain capability for managed service clients, you and your staff still need to be in a position to educate your clients about the value that you're bringing into their businesses because you want to pay you want them to pay a certain amount for the services you provide right so the more they know about the value that you add to their security to their you know uptime the more willing they are to buy into your offerings and you know you need to show them what problems are you solving how is the client going to benefit how are you ensuring higher levels of uptime productivity security all these aspects are necessary for your clients to know, and there's a host of different ways to do the education. So if you're doing that one-on-one, -on -one, that's called selling. If you're doing it with emails, blogs, social media, webinars, lunch and learn, that's marketing. So today we want to talk about how you can create strategies to have this particular type of conversation. Um, one issue that we often hear partners mention is um, the lack of time, right, um, or the lack of resources. And sometimes an additional problem can be that relationships with your vendors aren't just, just simply aren't good enough or you may not have a dedicated marketing person. And all of these issues are a huge reality for many MSPs in the markets. Um, and that's why we're producing a lot of material to make up for these hurdles. Um, so we're cranking out playbooks every quarter or so, and it's a really great library um, to solve the time problem and to eliminate the urgent need to hire a marketing staff member. Now that being said, even if you have vendors that help you in, in your marketing efforts, if you're at a point where you employ three or four or five full-time salespeople that carry a quota, it is really time to at least consider adding a full-time marketing staff member because if you crack the code on sales, the minute you establish a solid and strong and productive sales team, it won't be long until these guys come to you and are asking, well, where are my leads? When are they coming in? How many are going to come in? And marketing is a surefire way to ensure that that's not going to be a problem, you know, that, it's, that marketing is going to com contribute to your overall sales efforts. Um, you know, maybe from your perspective, why did Main Brain decide, um, you know, or once you decided to invest into marketing, what marketing challenges did you face and how did you overcome them in the company? Um, the biggest challenge I think we face is that people and customers are just overloaded with information everywhere. And with social media, uh, customers have gained a lot of a lot of power because they can choose what to be exposed to and um, so that's like the biggest barrier we have is like to break through the information wall and um, and to get them to act on these marketing activities um, so what we do is try to create relevant content and inform them about the threats about not having a backup or whatever IT problems you can have. Um, and it's it's just about making it relevant for them and in a language that they can understand because it can become very technical to understand backup and IT systems and whatever you need to improve your company. Um, so it's also just about continually to expose people to these threats and, and news stories and 
um, in order to get create awareness about MainBrain or the, or Cloud Finder or eFolder. Um, so yeah, that's what we that's the biggest challenge right now, um, and getting them to act on it. Because yeah, as you said, um, the salespeople are just suddenly just coming. Where are my leads? And and it's really hard when the customer has so much power in today's world. Because um, we can't force them to buy any products; they just they have to. <laughs> we get, we can just make the best circumstances to get them to buy the product. Um, but in the end, it's the customer who has the power. Um, so we also try to overcome these challenges by using our network, uh, where MainBrain participates in a network called BNI, um, with. Uh, where there are weekly morning meetings where we get a de decent amount of uh, referrals every week. Um, so it's essentially uh, yeah, spreading the word about MainBrain and, and our product portfolio, especially CloudFinder, because um, people only buy into uh, backup when the disaster has hit their company and then it's even more costly to fix the problems. Um, so yeah, right. it's again just about informing people about it. Yeah, I love the part that you mentioned about you know not just educating them and providing educational material, but also putting it into a language that they understand. Because not everyone you're dealing with may be um, on the same tech level as you are. Not everyone has been working in tech forever. You may be talking to um, the sales VP or the finance VP, and you need to find ways to still get your message across in a in an approachable way. So um, yeah. that's a really good point. And to anyone on the line who wonders what Cloud Finder means, um, don't worry, we'll get to that. Um, it's our e-folder, Cloud to Cloud Backup product. So you'll learn more about that later. Um, so just tacking on to the marketing challenges that we've discussed, um, another part that many companies are unaware of is that studies show that companies should generate six to eight touch points with each of their prospects in order to get them to move forward in their buying decision. Um, so these touch points can be anything that you create in order to get your target group's attention. It could be a blog post, a social media account, um, webinars, event sponsorship, all of that will fall under this category. And all of them are significant for your company's growth. Um, so when you finally decide to do marketing, um, it's often not enough to just occasionally upload a blog post or have, you know, one Facebook account. Um, but you should really try and align your messages and align your online presence um, because that's free. Usually it's very cheap for you to do um, and it increases your chance of getting as many touch points with your customers or prospects as you possibly can. Um, now, when we talk to partners about how to create growth, um, there's really three legs to the stool, if you will, or there's a couple of different options. Um, first and foremost, we are big believers in focusing on your base. Um, so when we talk to partners, one thing we usually ask them if they are trying to hire a hunter or a farmer when it comes to, you know, salespeople. And our advice oftentimes is to really just focus on mastering, on farming your base, your client base, before you go and hunt new clients. Because with existing clients, you have the connections, you have the recognition, and you completely understand exactly what their infrastructure looks like. And therefore, you can really go in there and have productive conversations. Um, so one, one way to go about that, if you want to focus on existing clients and really deepen relationships there, is you could start quarterly meetings or business reviews with your existing clients. And if you're not already doing them, that's probably because you haven't hired a full-time sales employee yet who can help you, who can go and coordinate that for you. Because it does take a lot of time and coordination to get away from a client and kind of control on focusing on the future. But if you're having a conversation with a client on how to make things better, you will find new revenue streams. You know, you will go deeper into the conversation and are more a better able to point out new, new upsell or cross-sell opportunities that will add value to them. Um, and now you might probably be in the same boat, but we are often having conversations with partners um, about products like Cloud to Cloud Backup. And one question that usually comes up is, well, how do we sell this? And the simple answer, and, and Nina already said that, is 
education on the risks that your clients face and the opportunities they have ahead of themselves to better protect their business. Because oftentimes it's not that your client doesn't want cloud, cloud backup, for example, it's that they are not fully aware and educated on the pros and cons of having that product. Um, you know, at first, it, for them, it's money they don't think they need to spend. So obviously there will be apprehension on their side, and it's your, your task, your challenge, but also your opportunity to go in and sort of level out the battlefield. Um, so yeah, opening up the conversation um, opens a whole new level of opportunities for you to network and to strengthen your relationships with clients. Um, and for that, of course, you have to do a ton of marketing to get there. Um, and the tools we want to share with you later today will hopefully help you in projecting expertise and thought leadership to your clients that will really make them realize they should reach out to you with any security-related question they may have. Um, because what you really want to do is you want to become more than just their managed service provider, their IT you know, go-to person. You want to be their virtual CIO. You want to be their trusted advisor. And it's all connected to content-based marketing. So hopefully a lot of what we're supplying to you today will help you with that. Um, now, that being said, the other way to grow your business is by acquiring new clients. Um, a lot of partners go out into the market with bundle packages and and certain cloud-to-cloud -cloud backup is a software that can be really a standard component of any MSP contract. If you're moving more clients to Office 365 or more clients that have cloud-based softwares for their back-end office functions. So a lot here is about taking your managed service bundle and adding more and more capabilities and features to that package that you're selling, which at the same time also allows you to increase the price over time and really to attract a really good monthly recurring revenue stream per user. Um, and of course, there's a lot of MSPs who reach a point where they don't just want growth, they want higher growth, like 10 or 20% a year. And if that's you, we um, are usually of the opinion that you really need to start taking on a new range of clients, um, which is the wedge strategy. So take Backup or BDR, for example, you can go and say, look, we know that there are a lot of clients out there who have very acute, very specific pain points in this one solution area, and we want to go and find those accounts, sell those guys the BDR service, and then use that as an edge to get to the rest of their IT stuff, to get our foot into the door. And, and that's a really effective strategy. It requires you to do some research beforehand, but it can really contribute to your overall growth. Um, and in any of these cases, though, marketing plays a role but driving this sales and product strategy, right? So, all right, so now that we've discussed the different growth strategies and the role that marketing can play in it, let's go ahead and think about some basic marketing content ideas that um, you can impl implement very easily. Um, so looking at your sales funnel, um, it's important to understand that you would use different kinds of content throughout the respective stages in the sales funnel. Um, as Nina mentioned, you can't just you know, convince a client to buy something. There is a certain set of steps that they undergo. Clients nowadays have power, and um, clients are on a buy buying journey, and there's usually a pain, pain point. So this can be either a very general pain or a very acute pain about a specific current situation. It could, for example, be Another MSP who's doing a really poor job, who's not responsive, who doesn't close tickets quickly, who doesn't serve the needs of the workforce as well. Or it could be areas like file collaboration, mobile productivity, backup. All of these could be pain points. So what you want to do is identify these pain points, identify these clients, and then start moving them into the sales funnel by starting the education of clients and prospects. So you want to feed quality marketing content into the funnel to produce quality, quality leads for your quota carrying salesperson. Um, now that may sound really abstract when you think about it in, you know, in a graph like that. Um, so I just want to show you a little more of how that would look in real life. Um, so at each of these various stages in the funnel, there are different tools that are available to you. Um, in terms of the educational stage, there are steps like social media, like blogging, 
routine emails like a health newsletter or periodic alerts to keep up with current events like security briefs, hacks, threats, etc. So you could put on an alert to your clients to show them that you're that you are, you know, up to date on current events, that you are the trusted advisor, and that you really are keeping your finger on the poles of the problem. So with that pro content that you provide, you can simply, um, you know, create very compelling short emails. It doesn't even have to be long. Um, 140 character tweet on Twitter, um, or host an hour long webinar. Um, all of these will get your prospect's attention, and you know, start the education process. Then once you've moved on from that, the next stage is promoting and selling. So when you're at the promote stage, you need PowerPoint presentations for your lunch alerts, or brochures for your trade shows, or short product presentations for on-hold messaging on your phone queues. All these are promotional efforts, and you also need tools that your salespeople can present to clients. Because um, that, that's, the, that's the last stage, the selling, right? You, that's where you really want to close the deal, and that's where as many visuals as you know, possible are necessary to really give your clients or prospects a good idea of what you're really trying to install in their offices back-end functions. So anything like brochures, presentations, but also compa competitive sheets between you know, products they may already be using and the product you're trying to sell them, all of these simple content marketing ideas will come a long way in um, you know, closing, closing the deal or at least speeding up the sales process. So to just sum up what we just discussed, um, I just want to reiterate why it really is important for partners to invest into marketing in the first place. And the answer is really simple. Um, marketing helps you to scale your business while reaching the right kinds of clients. Um, simple growth strategies like referrals or word of mouth, they were great, especially in the beginning, especially in the first you know, five to 10 years, depending on the location you're operating in. Um, and you may see that coming, come a long way. But reality is that there are only so many referrals to get. And eventually, that influx will die down. And that's when it's important to have you know, other alternatives already on, in the pipeline that you can use to keep the leads coming. And secondly, marketing really helps you differentiate yourself from, from your competitors and to appeal tailor to your prospects. Marketing allows you to just influence how prospects and clients perceive you, and by influencing that perception, you will also be able to charge more for your services. Reality is, and we've heard a lot of you know, MSP partners complain about that, um, you know, we sometimes have partners come up to us up to say, I know I'm twice as smart and twice as capable as the next MSP business around the corner, and yet that guy gets more leads than I do. And that's usually because clients want to partner with MSPs that not just are professional, but also appear professional, right? You never get a second chance for a first impression, and your first impression is marketing. It's your online presence. It's what clients see when they Google your company's name. Um, and pull up the first couple websites. So it won't do you any good that you're twice as capable as a competitor next door if that competitor regularly retweets relevant news articles or publishes email newsletters or sends out blog posts to his clients. Chances are high that it will be that competitor who will have more engaged clients, who will have more referrals, um, and just a more consistent pace of growth. So not just for your own growth strategy, but also for your competitive edge. It's really beneficial to do marketing. Um, Nina, do you know why Mainbrain decided to invest resources into marketing, you know, hire a full-time marketing person and dedicate, you know, finances to that? Um, we've always had a communications consultant, consultant connected to the company in order to develop a communication strategy because the partners of the firm are not communication uh, experts or marketing experts, so they just needed the, the resources and the expertise from outsiders. Um, and as you said, uh, you can only rely on word of mouth and referrals for a, a, long, so a short period of time. Um, so you have to invest in these activities to get out there and gain exposure 
that is not just word of mouth, even though that's still the most important reference you can ever get because it, it makes a decision much easier if you know somebody who has a great experience with Mainbrain or another product. Um, yeah, so that's why we actually started to go over to marketing and especially social media because it's yeah it's a cost efficient communications challenge a uh, challenge uh, channel because um, you can start with just getting people to like and share your updates um, before posting uh, huge amounts uh, of money in these posts uh, and then you can see if it works. Um, and yeah, and how you can optimize these marketing channels you have here, um, and then you can decide to go into posting some money into it so you can get a wider customer base um, and influence uh, influence in uh, even more people. Um, so yeah, that's is yeah, because you want every company wants to grow, um, so yeah, you have to use all the options you have to get more, gain more exposure and yeah that's why we invested in marketing um, awesome. yeah. yeah nice thank you um, all right so you know that being said anyone on the line may now be at the point where they're wondering how to best do marketing um, so from our experience working with partners um, it the name of the game today is to be useful and educational to your clients. Um, we've mentioned it a few times now, but buyers are on a journey, and buyers are the ones that are in control. Today is not the time anymore where buyers will just be sold on anything because it's shiny and cool. Um, they have most likely done a ton of research themselves and are using the web and other resources to assess their options. So. You as an MSP need to always be one step ahead and elevate your brand in a localized marketplace and online. Um, most importantly, you need to really position yourself as an expert speaker and a thought leader to get this awareness. Another you know, factor that a lot of our partners realized and we learned with them, um, and you may have been in the same boat, boat is that cold calling won't get you there anymore because you really want to warm up the right kinds of prospects and find ways to engage with them on multiple levels like we've learned earlier. So and especially any face-to-face -face time that you can get in with them is really valuable. It could be lunch and learns, it could be trade shows, or if you really don't want to you know, dedicate a lot of money to marketing, do webinars. Um, webinars especially, many partners often wonder how effective webinars really are. Um, the answer is as soon as you have more than two or three people registered, you're already winning because you're not having a one-on-one -on -one conversation anymore. You're having a one-to-many conversation. And naturally, any webinar will entail a certain amount of marketing and promoting. But once you, you know, have your, have your registrants, have your attendees, you have an hour of their time to educate your audience on relevant topics and get them to lend you an ear. So we always encourage partners to do that um, and you know, be relevant during your webinar. Or alternatively, if you feel like you don't have the time to organize one yourself, um, reach out and offer your services as an expert speaker. Um, join other people's webinars and get your word out that way. Um, and yeah, like we said, always try to understand whom you're speaking to, who your target audience is, and how you can really provide genuine, relevant content and insights to them. Um, Nina, maybe related to that, what kind of marketing tactics does Mainbrain do in general, not related to any product specifically, but just your host of marketing services? Um, we do uh, product seminars, um, which is just a live version of a webinar, um, and we get um, get participants through yeah, social media, and, and we also do um, marketing uh, phone promotion to get uh, other clients to yeah, participate in these product uh, seminars. Um, yeah, and we do uh, yeah social media activity on LinkedIn, Twitter, and Facebook. We have a, a blog uh, which is really valuable because it's 
a very important challenge, uh, channel to um, to educate people on on IT news and yeah. Um, and now we're we have started uh, advertising on Facebook um, where we're setting up uh, videos to advertise about Cloud Finder, for example. Um, we decided to go on Facebook. Um, it's relatively new that we're on Facebook um, because we see consumers are always online and they're always on Facebook uh, even though you're there as a private person. Uh, managing directors and C CEOs are always on the job and looking for new opportunities and ways to streamline workflows and yeah um, just being more efficient. Um, so we're trying these videos, video advertising um, because consumers also are becoming more visual um, and so if they can get the message in five seconds rather than reading for 30 seconds it's much better. Um, so yeah we're, we're hoping to get more people to act on our advertising this way. Um, so we're really excited about that. Nice, awesome. Yeah, I want to come back to your social media strategy um, towards the end of the presentation because I think that a really effective and interesting way and relatively cheap to to get you know audiences' attention, like you said, sell the message in as brief of a message as possible, really. Um, yeah. But yeah, um, now that you guys have heard so much about Cloud Finder and Cloud Cloud Backup, we just want to walk through a few trends that have, you know, influenced the market when it comes to the cloud. So in July 2014, Eiffel purchased a Sweden-based company called CloudFinder, which produces a cloud-to-cloud -cloud backup service. And we believe that the cloud is really fundamentally important to the future of the work landscape. Um, the cloud has arrived in many SMBs because it has now become sophisticated enough that businesses really find it useful in their everyday work life. So whether that's collaboration or keeping track of their sales and marketing data and something like Salesforce, um, there's so many different services out there that can really make your life easier. So at this point, about 80% of businesses are reporting that they are using some sort of cloud application in their companies, which makes that trend pretty clear. And for MSPs, that's really important to notice because um, it's a huge market opportunity. Um, so looking at the chart on your right, you see that there's a 44% growth for public cloud versus barely 9% for on-premises. So many of your clients will prefer using cloud solution alternatives. <clears throat> so next question for you may then be, how can I take advantage of the cloud? And one thing we really observed is that even though the cloud is really great in terms of ensuring uptime or reducing outages and that kind of thing, that's because Google, Box, Salesforce, Office 365, all of these um, you know, bigger cloud services or SaaS solutions have really robust servers. Um, they're great products. So data loss or data risks usually don't um, you know, happen on that end. It happens because users are still going to be users. And in the cloud, many restoring or recovery options are not built in or not intuitive or not as extensive as you may think. So a lot of users are facing data loss due to just running entirely in the cloud and not having backup in place. So Semantic reported um, that 40% of businesses have lost data in the cloud. And that's a pretty startling statistic and something that every managed service provider should note. Um, so when it comes to the adoption of cloud services, um, SMBs face two major problems. One is that businesses face data loss or data fragmentation or compliance violations because if there isn't a backup system in place for a cloud application, data can be easily lost forever. And in addition to that, data also spreads more as more cloud solution tools are being used and there's less consistency of where the data resides, and you need to just make sure that it can be all backed up under one roof. So now, when businesses move to the cloud, a lot of the premises growth or on-premises growth on backup or BDR 
customers don't take that up to the cloud. And so MSPs face the challenge of replacing that old revenue stream with a new one. And our solution to that is introducing Cloud Center Backup. <clears throat> now, this picture just really demonstrates well how, client of, how, how Cloud Funnel works for you and or, and or for your clients, depending on where you want to implement it. And basically what it does is it allows you to um, take any of the common cloud SaaS applications and connect it to Cloud Finder in a very simple way, and it provides restoring for any of those services. Um, so any of the issues just discussed can be solved by offering additional backup to a second site, like a data center that you can control. And then the other big challenge that organizations are facing, especially medium to big enterprises, is that you have data becoming siloed. And the MSP doesn't have a unified way to see all that data. And that makes it really complicated to cross-search for data, right? So full-text search is one of the really killer features of CloudFinder since all data is indexed. And then, of course, because you're able to do that, recovery is really fast. Um, so no matter what the scenario, there's anything from basic resource to actually restoring content and users and data right back into the application. And this all just, what it does is it gives MSPs the ability to govern client data and allows you to build managed services on top of a cloud application. So as you can see, um, when we built Cloud Finder, we built in support for the four major cloud services that are being used in the market today. So the vision for Cloud Finder is that we really want to back up any type of SaaS data um, and right now we're focusing on the four big ones that you that you see and you hear used often. Um, so we don't only back up simple things like emails and files, but also things like attachments, um, metadata, standard objects, um, custom objects, just to add thoroughness to your backups. And the reason for having multi-service support is that um, it's very likely that your clients are using more than one application. Um, just as an example, here at eFolder, we ourselves, we use Salesforce for our sales and marketing materials um, and our customer information, but then we use Office 365 for email. Um, so backing all this up in one place is really important to us and to your clients. And I think the whole idea of that you need to sell as a managed service provider is that clients wrongly assume that just because their data is in the cloud, it's safe when they all had their information, their sensitive files and folders stored on premises, they were way more, you know, way more aware that a backup or BDR solution was needed, but the cloud seems so safe, so, you know, easy to recover options that they don't think a second backup is necessary. And we've heard that that's, you know, that's the point to attack. Um, that's where you should do the most education um, around the product when you approach clients for that. All right, so now that we've mentioned a few times along the way that we have partner playbooks that help partners and prospects advertise services, um, I want to just walk you through that playbook to help you understand how simple it really does make your marketing efforts. Um, but Nina, before I go into more depth on the playbook, I think it'd be great to get an understanding, and you kind of mentioned that a little earlier, of what specifically you've done to catch prospects' interest on CloudFinder. Um, what has worked best when selling the product? Um, I think information is key here, um, and that's what has worked uh, most efficiently for us. Um, and also mentioning the monthly fee of Cloud Finder, because many clients are actually surprised when they learn about the low cost of Cloud Finder compared to what they could spend on reparations and repairs when disaster has hit. Um, I think many people think it's really expensive to have cloud-to-cloud -cloud backup um, in Cloud Finder. Um, I, and it, in the end, all business people think about is the bottom line. Um, so it's really effective to inform them about the price, actually. And, of course, the pros and cons of not having backup and of having backup. Um, and it's really important to come with some stories about real life because otherwise 
they don't understand the problem of not having a, back, a backup system in place. Um, and yeah, I think the problem with cloud services are that people rely too much on the security of, for example, Office uh, 365 and Salesforce and, and Google Apps. Um, so it's really important to also inform them about, um, yeah, that they don't have recovery system in, in place for you. They have them for themselves, but not something you can use as a, a business. That's your own responsibility. Um, yeah, that's. I think that's the key to this backup situation. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. Yeah. Um, I love that, especially. Yeah, going into more depth on the recovery options for each specific SaaS solution, um, and combining that with the low price because. Usually what we find is that clients are really surprised finding out that, oh, I don't have infinite storing or recovery options for my, you know, deleted inbox, um, for example. So um, making it more approachable and more understandable is usually a really good way to go. And um, yeah, and like I said, our playbook is aimed to help you with that. So I want to just show you a couple of screenshots from the playbook itself to give you a better idea of the kinds of collateral pieces that you would have access to. Um, so even if you're not a partner with us right now, um, it might give you an idea of what kind of um, content you really should produce to start off with your marketing and education. <clears throat> so first of all, we have drafted a variety of different emails for any occasion. So we have emails around important facts about the cloud or about detailing common retention policies that are used by SaaS applications, um, which also Nina just mentioned can be really useful, um, or how Cloud to Cloud Backup even works. What is the idea behind that product? Um, so there's a lot of material included that will make the educational part of marketing much easier for you. So if you have, you know, if you sit down for an hour and you write even just four different emails, you have a weekly, you know, you have a weekly email update to your clients for a month. Um, and that can already just help them create much more awareness and feel more connected to your business. Um, and then, as mentioned, blog posts can be incredibly important in helping you establish yourself as a thought leader to your clients. Um, but writing blog posts can take a really long time, especially if you're not used to doing it or if you're not, you know, naturally inclined to writing a whole page on a daily basis. So. That's why we've included a bunch of different blog topics um, for you. For example, you know, why backup is necessary or what the best practice tips for backing up and protecting your SAS information is. Um, and all of that is in the Word document, so you can easily edit it, white label it. Um, best practice tips with blog posts, once you do go through the effort and write one, um, publish it on as many channels as possible. You know create a blog tab for your website, um, share it on social media, um, both Twitter, Facebook, but also LinkedIn. Um, email it out to your clients in your weekly newsletter that you've designed an hour earlier, because um, all these are contributing to creating different touch points with your clients. Um, and then when going to on-site visits at clients' companies, it can be really helpful to get visuals when you're pitching new services. So a quick but really detailed PowerPoint tr presentation is usually really helpful in those situations. So our playbooks also include um, a client pitch deck that you can download either in PowerPoint or PDF format, depending on how many adjustments and changes you would like to make to the file. And then some other um, you know, downloadable assets that we include are um, product descriptions of different lengths. Um, you know, if you want to use our 10-word description, it could also be a great Twitter tweet. Um, we have various white papers that explain specific product market issues and trends. Um, we have product screenshots that you can, you know, upload on social media. We have on hold phone scripts and, and much, much more. So overall, we think that our playbooks are a really good way to get your marketing initiatives off the ground, really without much effort on your end. And while today's webinar related to Cloud Partner and Cloud to Cloud Backup, we do provide all these resources for your file sync and share or for BDR and backup as well. So if you are a partner um, and haven't used the playbook yet or aren't aware of it, definitely reach out to us. We'd love to you know, hook you up with it. 
if you're a prospect and you're interested in, you know, in our services, um, reach out because that, you know, we do provide marketing guidance from day one. So we'd be happy to help you with that, with that strategy. Um, so that was it from my end. Um, if you would like to try CloudFinder for yourself, you can either reach out to us or um, do a demo. And again, I'll send out the slide deck after the presentation so you'll have um, all that information. Um, now is the time to ask any questions that you have. So just submit um, yeah, questions through your Q&A log and Nina and I will do our best to address them. Um, but meanwhile, meanwhile, Nina, I also have a couple questions just to go back to marketing um, and sort of marketing challenges that may be interesting to the audience. Um, so one big, re one big issue with marketing is usually budget. Being on a really, you know, really small budget or having no budget at all. Um, what's, you know, what's the money that you're working with and how do you overcome budget problems or constraints? Yeah, um, yeah. As a small company, we don't have the major marketing budget uh, as larger IT companies have. So what we started with was essentially a homepage, uh, which we recently updated to be more customer friendly and very, yeah, very easy to use. Um, and then we worked a lot with. Uh, um, search engine optimization to get a high Google rating um, so that we're the first one to pop up if you search for an intern or uh, IT department. Um, and then we essentially expanded to social media um, because it's just essential to be where the clients are and everybody is on social media, either Facebook or LinkedIn or Twitter. Um, and that's just to create, it, they're free to create some exposure of your company. Um, so, and in the end, we have also relied on our network um, to get out there in the beginning. Um, so it's only been in the last couple of years we have expanded to sponsoring our updates and making advertising on Google AdWords or Facebook. Um, so we're just trying to, yeah, Get what get what we can out of our small marketing budget. Um, yeah. Right. Um, we have a few questions from the audience. So first question: um, Do you know what your average sales sales cycle is um, at your company? So once you've qualified a potential lead, how long does it take you to close a deal? Do you have um, a rough number on that? I don't have a rough number because um, yeah, when the lead comes, it goes out, out to our part. Uh, yeah, my my boss, uh, who's in charge right. of sales, and he's the one who essentially has to close the deal because he's the expert on the IT uh, section. Um, right. But it's uh -huh. I think it, we start we start with the casual coffee meeting, um, and then yeah, it's approximately a month. Uh, of closing a deal, I think, um, yeah. Um, so when people reach out to you that are interested in specific products or services, do you offer um, trials or free demos um, or anything along those lines to help partners or prospects experience the product and you know increase their interest? Yeah, we do, and we yeah we try to introduce them to the product in the best possible way so they can see how easy it actually is because it's always about like the employees of the company they always think oh it's changing again and now we have to get a new IT system and it's complicated to learn right. <laughs> uh, and it's just about showing how easy it actually is because IT is, most programs are actually really easy and sometimes you don't even think about how easy it is. Um, so it's just about showing employees that it's so easy to use and you really don't have to think about it. Um, yeah, I mm -hmm. think that's really essential. Right. Um, another question. Have you noticed that there are certain verticals that are more likely to adopt cloud backup or that are more interested in it than other industries or verticals? Um, no, no. I think I think if you if the CEOs of companies or managing directors, um, whatever title they have, I think 
it's those you have to to I think it's those you have to expose to the threats because it's essentially mm -hmm. their their company in the end. Um, I don't think employees uh, in general think about the threats that are to all these cloud services or yeah cyber right. attacks you can be exposed to and essentially it's the CEO's responsibility to have to secure the data data so I think it's those you have to expose mostly to these threats because it's yeah their right. kid, the, the company is their kid so they should right. do anything to do. <laughs> Right, to, and at the end of the day, I feel like cloud-to-cloud -cloud backup really is useful or important to any sort of industry, right? I mean, anyone who does use a cloud solution should also exactly. use cloud backup. Um, yeah, so that offers exactly. a broad broad range for you. Um, yeah. So maybe in total, because I know you guys are doing a bunch of different marketing activities, are there any that you have found to be most engaging with prospects or most successful um, in terms of, you know, client turnaround? Or. Yeah, um, I think actually even though it's relatively new for us to be on Facebook and advertising there, uh, I think that's the that's a really important one and I think we've got, uh, yeah, we have gained some important leads here. Um, so it just, yeah, it shows that everybody is on Facebook and it's where you can catch them because uh, they're online every every minute of every day um, and that's <laughs> where you can expose them re uh, to a lot of things even though it's in a private section and then we, we have also had success with LinkedIn but I think uh, yeah I think just Facebook is really essential because it's yeah you're in there every every single day so yeah right and what we realize is that I mean, all of these social networks are for free, you can sign up, but I feel like when you want to start paying for social media, um, investing into Facebook ads is usually still cheaper than using one of LinkedIn's really premium features, because it usually means you have to upgrade your LinkedIn account, and that comes with a monthly, you know, new recurring fee, but Facebook even allows you to do really just one-time campaigns or one-time ads if you want to have a webinar sponsored or something, so I feel like that's really useful, especially if you just got into social media marketing, to really yeah. try and figure things out as you go along without having to commit to a long, you know, subscription or something. Exactly. Yeah. Um, and then, yeah, just last question to, to sum this all up. Um, for anyone who's on the line and who's not doing a lot of marketing at this point or any marketing really, um, but hopefully has gotten curious or encouraged through the webinar, what would be your advice to get started with marketing? Where would you say they should start or what should they keep in mind? I think, of course, it's it's about knowing what you want and who you want to target. Um, if it's a specific industry or, yeah. Um, and I think it's just really essential and important to be on social media because it's really cost efficient. Um, because in the beginning you can rely on your network to spread the word. Um, of course, mm -hmm. that requires them to follow you um, to get the updates. Um, <laughs> and, yeah, and I think newsletters are also a great way because you already have the, the, your clients' emails, so you can inform them in that way, and then you can encourage them to follow you on social media there. Um, so right. yeah, it's just about combining <laughs> all the the free channels you can get, um, and you have a lot of free channels in the beginning, and then you can see. You can yeah you can see if it works and then you can start posting money into it and yeah building up momentum of course um, yeah yeah awesome. yeah I think that's a really good um, concluding sentence or you know food for thought so thank you for that um, and yeah with that we're coming to the end of the webinar so everyone who's on the line thank you so much for joining. Um, if you want to reach out to me um, to follow up on anything that we've discussed during the webinar or like I said, if you're a partner and you would like to um, set up a meeting for me to walk you through the playbook more, don't hesitate to reach out. My information will be in the slide deck and in the email you'll get later today. So um, yeah, I'd be happy to stay in touch with you all.
Um, thank you so much for joining, and have a great rest of the last September week, everyone. And thank you, Nina, so much for you know joining in and sharing your real life examples. Um, that's always really appreciated. You're welcome. All right. Well, have a good day, everyone. Bye. Bye.